Hello everyone, welcome back to Systematic Symphony of Species. In this video, we're going to talk about species concepts, and our main focus is going to be on one of the oldest and simplest definition of a species, which is typological or morphological species concepts. In each slide, I have tried to bring all the definitions in sentences in the slides so the viewer and listener could follow up. So, Without any further ado and delay, let's go through the species concepts. So, before I actually go and open up the typological or morphological species concept, let's first bring a definition. What is a species? A species is a group of interbreeding or potentially interbreeding natural populations that share a common evolutionary lineage, possess a distinctive set of morphological, genetic, and or ecological characteristics, and are reproductively isolated or ecologically distinct from other such groups. Species represent discrete units of biodiversity that are united by their evolutionary history, morphological traits, genetic makeup, ecological roles, and the potential for gene flow within the group. As you see, there are many criteria incorporating to define a species. We will talk about each of these criteria and definitions in various species concepts in the future videos and to some part in this video as well. So the precise criteria to define a species may vary depending on the research context, the organism in question, and the species concept applied. However, collectively, these criteria aim to capture the fundamental concept of a species, which is distinct, interrelated, and evolving entities within the tree of life. This definition that we just brought earlier reflects the multifaceted nature of species, incorporating elements from the biological species concept, which relies on reproductive isolation as a backbone, phylogenetic species concept with a focus on common evolutionary lineage, morphological species concept that we talk about it more in this video, which relies on distinctive morphological traits, genetic species concept, which the backbone of this concept is shared genetic lineage and ecological species concept relying on ecological distinctiveness of a species. It underscores the complexity and diversity of a species in biology. So as we just mentioned, there are several main species concepts proposed by biologists and taxonomists to define what constitutes a species. Please note that not all of these concepts are widely accepted or applied. The choice of which concept to use can depend on the specific goals of a study and the organism being studied as well. As we just said in this video, our main focus is going to be on typological or morphological species concept. In summary, it views the species as fixed, unchanging types with essential features and this is an old pre-evolutionary concept. So the idea actually came up in the world of taxonomy and biology before the idea of evolution appear. So it dates back to very ancient times, like the times of Plato and Aristotle. This concept regards the species as fixed, discrete types with essential and changing features. Again, this is a pre-evolutionary view of a species as abstract ideal forms. This concept doesn't allow for any variation, change, or transitional forms. This concept is incompatible with modern evolutionary theory, but it still influences some views of species as re refined abstract types. So the typological species concept, as we just earlier mentioned, also known as morphological species concept, is rooted in the idea that the species are defined by their shared physical characteristics or morphological traits. According to this concept, individuals that closely resemble each other in terms of their appearance, anatomy, and other morphological features are considered members of the same species. It is based on the assumption that there is a type of specimen that represents the average or ideal form of a species. Other individuals within the same species are measured against this type of specimen. If they closely resemble the type of species, they are considered part of the same species. Otherwise, they might be classified as a different species. <clears throat> So there are some pros and cons for typological species concept. 
One of the most important advantages of this concept is its simplicity. The typological species concept is relatively easy to apply, especially when dealing with well-defined and easily observable morph morphological traits. This is a historical context, as we just mentioned earlier. This concept has played a significant role in the history of biological classification and taxonomy, allowing early naturalists to categorize and describe a wide variety of organisms. And <clears throat> at last but not least is its accessibility. In cases where advanced techniques like genetic analysis are not available, morphological traits can be readily observed, making this concept accessible to a broader range of researchers. But it comes with its disadvantages as well. So when we are dealing with variation within a species, or we are facing with convergent evolution, cryptic species, or lack of evolutionary insight, these are just some of the disadvantages or limitations of using morphological or typological species concept. Ring species, as an example, are a classic example of the challenges posed by the typological species concept. In a ring species population, as you see, one of the most famous examples, one in the picture on the right, Actually, in the ring species, population form a ring-like distribution around a geographical barrier, and neighboring populations can interbreed. However, as we move on around the ring, population gradually accumulate enough differences that the individuals at the ends of the ring or at the ends of the spectrum cannot interbreed. So if you're going to apply typological species concept to define the variety and diversity you see in these populations, then it struggles to define whether the ends of the rings are separate species or not, as intermediate population can still interbreed. The other limitation, as we just mentioned earlier, are the intraspecific variation. It is one of the most important and significant limitations of this concept. It may not adequately actually account for variation within a species. Individuals within a species can exhibit a wide range of morphological differences due to factors like age, sex, and environmental influences. If such variation is substantial, it might lead to confusion in classifying species using this concept. For instance, if researchers were to use only morphologically morphological traits to define a species, they might end up splitting a single species into a multiple species due to minor differences. The other limitation is actually very apparent in the case of convergent evolution. The concept struggles when dealing with the cases of the convergent evolution. But what is convergent evolution? It actually occurs when unrelated species, again, unrelated species, evolve similar morphological traits inadequately in response to similar environmental pressures. For instance, dolphins and sharks have similar body shapes adapted for swimming efficiently in water, but they are not closely related. The typological species concept might mistakenly classify them as the same species due to their similar external appearances. The other case of limitation comes from cryptic species. Cryptic species are organisms that appear identical or very similar morphologically but are genetically distinct. They cannot be differentiated using the typological species concept because it relies solely on visible morphology or traits. DNA analysis is often necessary to distinguish these cryptic species from one another. And as we mentioned again earlier, this concept lacks evolutionary insight. It actually appeared before the idea of evolution came up among biologists. So it doesn't consider the evolutionary relationships among the species. It doesn't capture the idea that the species are connected by common ancestry, and the morphological differences might have arisen over time due to genetic changes. This limitation is especially relevant in modern biology, where genetic information plays a crucial role in understanding the relationship between different species. In conclusion, the typological species concept was a significant step in the history of biological classification, but its limitations have become very apparent with our deeper understanding of genetic, evolution, and complexities of life. 
While it is still has its place in certain contexts, it is now often supplemented with more comprehensive and modern species concepts that incorporate genetic information, reproductive compatibility, and evolutionary history to provide a more accurate representation of diversity of life on Earth. In the last two slides, I've brought a list of references for deeper studies regarding a species concept and with a focus on morphological species concepts. I really appreciate your attention to this video, and I would be really thankful if you, if you could share your ideas on their species concepts and morphological species concepts. See you in the next video, and thank you.